so much for coming to Sundance to talk to us. That's why you came, right? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're so excited. Tell us about Predisposed. What is your movie about? Um, so, uh, well, I played uh, Deputy Kenya Jones on True Blood, mm -hmm. HBO. And um, I am here uh, to promote Predisposed. And Predisposed is um, an independent film we actually did not long ago in June. Oh. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it came together uh, rather nicely and very quickly, uh, starring Jesse Eisenberg, Melissa Leo, and Tracy Morgan. And it is about um, a musical prodigy who's having a very bad day trying to get into Juilliard and get his mother into rehab all at the same time. So it's a lot of shenanigans going on. It's a dark comedy and it's a lot of fun. Wow, how does your character, like, what is the role your character plays? Well, my, my character plays a sort of very grounded uh, role uh, in the movie. Her name is Lisa, and uh, she is a social worker, and she works primarily with um, Jesse Eisenberg's uh, sister in the movie, because uh, she's got some issues. <laughs> <laughs> but, you gotta have issues yeah. at Sundance. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's got some issues, um, so, it's, it's good stuff. How is this different than a TV show like a big budget, like being an independent film, kind of like a, pro a passion project for someone? How is that different being on set? Um, I, I think that the main difference, uh, you know, fortunately for me, I've had the great, great, great good fortune of working with really smart, really talented uh, people. And, um, you know, from, from the people on True Blood, the writers and the, and the producers, you know, every table read, we sit around and I'm like, these people are good, you know what I mean? They're very talented. Um, and so, you know, they, they had that same experience with, uh, with Predisposed. And, you know, the big difference really, quite frankly, is I think that there's more money going on on True Blood than there was uh, with Predisposed. Predisposed is, is, was a very independent film. And, um, and so I think that there were pro probably more resources uh, with True Blood, but, uh, you know, that doesn't, uh, it usually doesn't make a difference when the, when the, the quality of the work is good and, and the writing is great and the directing is great and the actors come to play, and play strong mm -hmm. and um, so, you know, all that stuff doesn't matter. But it was, it's, it's the same sort of, uh, you know, just good, good group of, of talented folk. How did you get the script or get involved? What? Uh, really, I just had an audition. Just got a call from my agent. Oh, you have an audition for a movie called Predisposed. Um, he told me what the cast was, uh, who, who was in the cast, and I was like, I'm in. What's happening? You know? <laughs> um, so, you know, it was, you know, great people who I, who I respect and admire, and uh, so it was, it was a great time. What kind of work did you do to prepare once you had the script? What, what is your process like? Um, I guess it's different, different with, with, with each character. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I try to look at the script um, you know, I think uh, the, the script gives uh, an actor uh, the sort of givens, and uh, you know, you're, you're as an actor, I guess you're asked to sort of interpret this character within the realm of of these givens, and so, so yeah, it's 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 based on uh, it's based on the material that I've I've gotten, and and how I can and what I can bring to the to the table. Can you talk a little bit about what happens when you read the script? How do you respond to it? You just put it down, think about it, the character, or do you read it over several times? What, what um, happens usually, once you get it? Yeah, usually I read it over once, and you know, if it's good, I read it, you know, from beginning to end. You know, if not so much, it's a little, <laughs> little stop and go, a little choppy. Yeah. But um, you know, in the case of you know this script, it was great and uh, it was interesting. It was it was different um, from the stuff that I usually uh, read. And um, can you offer notes if you think, oh, I think the character should do this, or we should be going in a different direction, maybe we should try something else? What? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's certainly a, an opportunity to do that. Um, certainly, you know, writer, director was, was very open to that. And, and we talked a little bit about that uh, before we started. Um, but, you know, the, the thing that's most fun for me is, is, is when the director says, well, you go, you know, we hired you to come and figure this thing out. And so you give me something that I hadn't thought of. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, as an actor, that's, that's the delight. Um, and that's what keeps it fresh and interesting and um, a little bit, uh, you know, just keeps you present. You feel like that happens more often on an independent film versus a big budget, um, you know, where you have more contr 
controlled producers and people coming and saying it has to be exactly like this? Right. Or do you, do you have the freedom whenever you go into a project to feel like you can say whatever you want about? Yeah, well, I guess I've got to say, you know, again, I've been very fortunate. Mm -hmm. I've been very fortunate with people who, uh, you know, uh, uh, HBO is, is sort of renowned for um, um, embracing uh, artists and letting them sort of do their thing. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of that, um, you know, I feel on True Blood and certainly, um, you know, it, it was that way also with Predisposed. So, uh, yeah, I, I, feel, I feel, you know, I feel comfortable. I feel like I have room. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges? Like, what was the most difficult part of making this movie? Was there a moment where you thought, how am I going to do this? What, what's going to happen next? No, I, and it wasn't. Um, there wasn't. There's a little girl in the movie. And, uh, you know, it's always interesting working with uh, children and mm -hmm. obviously always interesting working with animals. Because sometimes you don't ever know what you're going to get. <laughs> and you just go with it. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, other than that, no, it's, it's um, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty uh, comfortable with, uh, the, with whatever's thrown at me on the day. Is there a character you want to play next or something you've got sort of in the future that you want to do? Yeah, well, actually, I, am, I actually wrote and directed my first feature film. It's called Butterfly Rising, and it's on the oh, yeah, excellent. it's on the film festival circuit right now, and it's a very contemporized take on the story of Mary and Martha from the Bible. So it's about these okay. two women who take this road trip, um, and so I wrote. Uh, I feel very satisfied with this character that I wrote, so Rose Johnson. She is um, a woman in a small town who's um, deeply sexual. She's a little bit perhaps ahead of her time Ooh. and not very well liked in this small town. Um, so she has uh, relationships with other women's husbands without any apology and uh, she's just very different and not very well liked. And so uh, sort of aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wrote a character that I really wanted to play and, and I had the great good fortune of, of being able to write it and direct it. and. Uh, produce it, and I also uh, wrote the book to Butterfly Rise. Amazing. Yeah, so it's, it's exciting. It's an exciting time for me, you know, as you know, writer-director and as an actor, being on the show and, um, you know, being in Predisposed. And um, I'm also in a project called What About Us? Mm -hmm. um, the producers of Kenya Wanda, mm -hmm. uh, which won the, the, the Sundance Audience Award last year, are doing a new project. And I'm involved in that project, and we're going to shoot that uh, in Atlanta. Very cool. Yeah, so it's exciting. What's it like being at Sundance? Is it your first time? How yes, it's my you, first Sundance tell us what experience. You well, go it's out, just you great. Party. It's just really cool, and the weather is—I mean, it's snowing, but it's, it's snowing still right now. really like incredibly, incredibly, incredibly beautiful. This is my second trip to Park City. It's my first uh, Sundance experience, and just lovely. It's just lovely. You know, talking to really talented, creative people who are who are um, who are doing really cool, interesting things, and so I met lots of them last night at the New Frontier party, um, and there was another Indie Fest party, and uh, uh, so you know, it's just you know, meeting people on the shuttle and talking to them, and just like these random happenstance things going on, and um, are you staying out late? Getting up yeah, early. I am. You know, usually I'm a, I'm a pretty good early bird, but, uh, you know, I was out until about four last night, which was like, whoa, you know, for me. Uh, but it was, uh, it was great fun. Very cool. Yeah. Well, this is the year people are saying for women in Sundance. Have you felt that vibe sort of with all the female, being a female writer-director? How do you, you know, have you noticed sort of a turnaround in the industry? Yeah, well, I, I, I find that it's an exciting time for women in film. I find that it's an exciting time for African Americans in film. Um, there's a great wealth of both here at the festival this year. And I think that people are just sort of taking matters into their own hands and doing it themselves, which I think obviously is a very proactive way to, to go about, you know, your life, your job, your art. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm very heartened by that, very encouraged and very inspired by that. Uh, do you have any advice to young filmmakers, like someone like yourself who looks up to you and says, I want to do that? Is there one like token piece of advice that you yeah. can give that person? Well, I mean, I, I, I would think that right now there's no excuse not to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, um, money, I think, was a, was a great barrier. But uh, I think with technology 
and a really great, great, great team of people, um, you can do really extraordinary things. So uh, you know, just do it. Just you know, do it. And, 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 and make it know that it's difficult and know that there are uh, endless sacrifices to be made. Know that your life will be uncomfortable in many, many moments, probably longer than you would like. <laughs> and to keep focused and doing uh, what it is you want to do. And the people who don't do it are just sort of the ones who just stop for whatever reason, you know, and, 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 and those reasons may, you know, very well be, be valid, but, uh, you know, slow and steady wins the race.